it's always tempting to try to find an appropriate gospel for a particular celebration and match the two together. But I have always found it much more challenging and fruitful to allow the regular cycle of readings to inform us even though at first blush it might be difficult to understand how these readings might apply to the celebration. And so today we're not using readings that are in the marriage ritual that are reserved to weddings and anniversaries. But we're using the same reading that all Catholics around the world today are hearing. And as we look at this particular Gospel of Luke, what strikes me is that the message for all of us, and especially for you who are married couples of 50 years together, is that it is a reminder to all of us that on the day of your wedding, Jesus not only called you to fidelity to each other, gracing you with his presence in your life, but he also called you to deepen your discipleship, your following of him. I've often told couples that are preparing for marriage when I was doing marriage preparation as a parish priest, that the couple, you together, are to be the best means of Jesus' salvation for each other. You are to be the best means of God's grace to get each other to heaven. That's a responsibility, a chief one, he gives you as a disciple. And so today, we hear a meditation on how one is a disciple as a good steward. You have been given in each other's hands the great treasure of each other's lives that you have held preciously in your own hands. And the Lord calls you today good stewards. You have been those wise stewards who have shepherded each other. You have loved each other, not only in good times and in bad, but you've loved each other so that your souls have been ennobled. What is it about a disciple that's also the same quality of being a good steward? We see that in the gospel. I want to point out three ways. The first thing is that we see in this very interesting parable that Jesus gives, this steward who's very clever. He knows he's going to be fired. And yet, what does he do? He takes advantage of the moment, since he's still in charge, to give a haircut to all of the obligations that people owe his master so that he can feather his bed, his bed for the future. He can go ahead and call them friends so that they welcome him after he's let go. He's one who knows how to adapt. There's something about a disciple who's able to size up a situation, who's able to reflect on where they are in their life and see what are the opportunities that God is giving. You no doubt have had to do that time and time again in your life. You are not the same people that you married on your wedding day and believe me, I can imagine you have had to adapt in a lot of ways. There have been a lot of adaptations in your relationships with each other. You've had to have those moments in which you stretch yourself and see whether or not you can really continue in this commitment and you have found deep resources of God's grace in order to do so. I've always liked that wonderful parable that Father Henry Nouwen always spoke about in terms of how sometimes we view our lives in very, very rigid ways. He said so often we think of our life as something we're building, like we build a wall. We have these bricks that we put together. There is the brick of our family background, or maybe our heritage, the education we have, the degree that we earn, 
the job that we get, to the person we marry, the, uh, the promotion we have, the children that come along, the house we buy, maybe the car, the boat. And all of a sudden we begin to see that this is our life, this, this wall that we built, this thing that we constructed ourselves. But sooner or later what happens, some of those bricks come out. Maybe we lose our job or a child dies. Maybe there's illness or financial woe. And all of a sudden, the life that we thought we were putting together comes down crumbling like a wall. But it's the person, the disciple, who's able to adapt, who has faith, who's able to see that in those moments, the Lord is present with His grace, taking those bricks that have crumbled and creating not another wall, but a concave space where he can come in deeper into your lives and where you can come more deeply into each other's lives and where you grow and you're able to adapt. That's discipleship. And so when you think today of the moments in which you have had to change and make accommodations and do things you thought you never could, Know that you were at that moment being a good steward. You were adapting. You were like that clever man in the gospel today by God's grace. It's in those moments that you were grace, that you were being the disciple that Jesus called you to be on your wedding day. But there's a second quality of this man. He has a great hope for the future. He doesn't look at the past. He doesn't rest on his laurels, but he sees something opening up in his life. It's interesting that this parable falls on the heels of the prodigal son parable, which we had last week. And if you read the Gospel of Luke, right before this text about the crafty steward is the conversation that the father has with the older son who's complaining about the party that the father's throwing for this prodigal son. And there is that conversation. As he answers that older son, he tells him, I'm always with you. Everything I have is yours. This crafty steward puts that into practice. He acts as though the master's possessions are his own that he can do with them as he wants. He knows that this is a rich opportunity for his future. And the same is true for your lives. You have seen those moments of God's grace as opening the future. Even though things in the past have been difficult, mistakes were made, sin was committed. You didn't look to the past, you looked to the future. That is what we need to remind ourselves as disciples today and even more critical because sometimes we allow even our church or our nation to live in nostalgia, to think that our best days are behind us. But a disciple is one who always has a sense that the future of God is always opening to us because Jesus tells us the words of the Father. I'm always with you. Everything I have is yours. Just imagine how our lives will change if we wake up every morning and really believe that. Hearing the words of God, don't be afraid. Take the next step in the future. I'm always with you. Everything I have is yours. Reflect on how that has been true in your life. So today as you celebrate these 50 years, it's not a moment to look in the rearview mirror. Yes, maybe in Thanksgiving, but the Lord's still calling you to take that next step because he's always with you and everything he has is yours. And finally, we see that this steward acts in such a way that changes the lives of a lot of people. He surely changes the people who owe money and some sort of repayment to the master, but he also changes the master because the master says, I approve of this. 
This is a clever person. Discipleship will always be tested by whether or not we are living our lives in such a way that we're changing the lives of other people. Think of the people in your 50 years together that you've come across that you've made better. It's in those moments that you've exercised discipleship in being a good steward. Some years ago, a father of a family was telling me the story of his 16-year-old daughter who came to him one day and said, Dad, I don't want to go to Mass anymore with the family on Sunday because it's the same thing over and over again and I don't get anything out of it. Now, I know that's shocking to you that you would never hear that from a teenager. I know that's shocking. And the father said, I get that. I understand that. It's tough to do the same thing over and over again and not get anything out of it. He said, for instance, I've been getting up at 4.30 in the morning, three days a week for the last four years to take you to swim practice. And I sit there and I watch you go back back and forth. It's the same thing. And I don't get anything out of it. But he said, when I see what it does for you, I tell myself, it doesn't matter if I get something out of it. I'm happy to do it because you get something out of it. I'm happy because it changes your life. And my being there helps that happen. And so when you go to church on Sunday, maybe put yourself aside and look at the people around you and let them see how happy they are to see you there. Because a lot of people are suffering today in the world and they need a community. They need people stand shoulder to shoulder with them and sing songs that lift their hearts and see a youthful face that says they believe too. Think of all those people whose lives are changing simply because you're just there. And so today, Think of all the people's lives you've changed because you were there as a couple for them. You were being a good steward. You were responding to the call of deeper discipleship that Christ gave you on your wedding day. Today we celebrate, yes, your 50 years of faithful, fruitful love. But we also, through this gospel, Celebrate your discipleship, your stewardship, for God has placed each other in your hands. And today, as you give thanks to God, know that the Lord is saying to you, good and faithful servant, you are blessed this day as you come here to celebrate because you are able to adapt as disciples, because you believe in the future and know that the Lord promises that he's always with you and everything he has is yours. And because you have made a difference in the lives of so many people. So congratulations for 50 years, but congratulations for being good stewards.